Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Tempest Knives Pinion, designed by uh, Casey Spiron of Knives Fast. Um, at the time of this video, the pre-order is still open for these, and it's got a good price on it. In fact, I like this knife. I still want you guys to hear what I have to say, and I'm definitely going to share my thoughts, but uh, this is a good knife. I'm going to link it right down below so you guys can check out that pre-order if you want. Hopefully, it's still available at the time you're watching this video. Thanks so much to uh, Casey for sending this knife in. This will go back to him when I'm done. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and do an overall measurement of this guy. Uh, overall length coming in at 7.85 inches. Blade length is coming in at 3.25. 3.5 inches, cutting edge is coming in at about 3 and an 8. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Wrap Model 1 and the Ontario Wrap Model 2. You can see here, it's kind of in between. Sorry, we should get this guy probably right in the middle. That would be helpful. So it's kind of right in between. Yeah, it definitely doesn't feel like a huge knife. It feels like kind of a medium-sized knife. Let's go ahead and put it up against the uh, Spyderco PM2. I was missing it. It was way up there today. And the Spyderco Terra 3, once again, kind of in between these two. And then last but not least, we'll go ahead and put it up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. And if I can find it, what happened to it? There it is, the Benchmade Bug Out. <laughs> it's as closest to the size of the Bug Out, but the handle profile is a little different. It's also thicker in the overall, well, the blade itself is maybe a little bit longer. The cutting edge is honestly about exactly the same. How's the action on this guy? Uh, the action is really good. These are made by Kubi, and if you've handled knives from Kubi uh, at this price point, you'll know that they generally do a good job. It is very easy to manipulate the lock bar because there's plenty of cutout right there. It's very easy to reverse flick it using that little slot, but if you like to do the forward flick, you can also do that. I don't really have a problem with the action at all. Let's go ahead and do uh, carry profile, so thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here it's about the same, but there is a little bit just a little bit of contouring going on right there, so appreciate that. I do, personally. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. You can see here it's really maybe a hair longer than the Spyderco Para 3, but nowhere near as tall as either. You really shouldn't have a problem carrying it. Um, what are we looking at for materials? We're looking at, in this case, this is the Black Micarta, and while this version says OS 10 uh, on it, the version that you'll actually get is in 14C28N. This is a review sample, but rest assured, if you pick this knife up, it says right there on the website, these are in 14C28N, which is uh, probably the best, at least one of the best budget knife steels out there. So that's great. I don't have a problem with that. And then we have full steel liners on both sides. You can see right here and right here, full steel liners. So that's great. Weight. Uh... 3.75, that's my guess. Ah, less than that, 3.56. Ratios are pretty good on this. That's almost an ounce an inch as far as the overall weight to blade length ratio goes, so pretty good. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. The pivot is a T8 and it is captive. I know that because after a while, Flipping it, I noticed the blade was kind of coming off center like all pocket knives do. So I decided, I was like, yeah, that's a good opportunity to test the pivot. So I recentered it, and sure enough, the pivot is captive. So I appreciate that. The body screws, I'm not even going to check them. They're all T6, but there's only two per side, and one of them is actually holding in the pocket clip. So that's nice. Very minimal hardware. Wish they were all T8, but you can't always get what you want as long as you have quality tools and a place to put your hardware. You should be good to go. Let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness on this guy. I think I actually did measure it, and it came in at 125. Let's see if that's correct. I'm sorry, I'm trying to zero it out. Um, yeah, actually, almost on the dot. Um, so yeah, that's uh, definitely on the thinner side. The average is, from my perspective, is about 135 thousandths. Um, of course, the optimal blade stock thickness depends entirely on the geometry of the blade. I think this is a good blade stock thickness for this blade geometry and blade profile, etc. So that's fine. Um, what else do we need to do? We did, uh, did we do everything? I think we did. Should we go ahead and uh, talk about the meat and potatoes of this knife? 
This is a very ergonomically friendly knife, and I like the uh, the option to choke up right here. Uh, I like the fact that this area sort of curves out and then turns into the blade instead of this part of the blade being straight and the actual grind, the, the actual final edge, just sort of transitioning into unsharpened blade. It's really nice. I like that. Uh, it looks good and it allows you to choke up effectively behind the blade without feeling like you're really going to run your finger right into it, right? It's still pretty close, so be cognizant of it, but it's a fairly roomy area. You can also choke back and you have plenty of room. This does not have an, I, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, the Spyderco Para 3, and these are two completely different knives. The Spyderco Para 3 sacrifices cutting edge in favor of um, ergonomic, uh, the, the ergonomics and the ergonomic space, right? So you have more room to kind of choke up if you want, and then you have a reasonable amount of cutting edge. This is essentially the same thing, but there's one thing that I would have done differently. I, I, I want to make clear that I do like this. You can see back here where the blade tip is and where it ends on the handle, right about there right? Um, there's a lot more blade I think that we could have gained here and to make just, and this is just additional functional cutting edge, which really truthfully won't make that much of a difference day to day. Um, but also just the blade to handle ratio. I think we could have gotten the blade about out here and it's because of how this backspacer wraps around. And there's a lot of knives that do this. The backspacer probably, and I, it, obviously it would, it, we would have to change the profile of the blade a little bit. And there might be some internal changes that would need to happen so that it, you know you weren't running your finger into the blade down here. Um, it just depends on how this was set up. But I think the backspacer should have ended maybe about right here. And then it would, it would have been nice if we could bring the tip out maybe to about where my fingernail is. Not so much that you'd be able to touch it back here, but yeah. That is the issue with backspacers wrapping around the tip right here is you lose potential, you know, additional cutting edge. Is that really a problem on this knife? No, not really. But for people who kind of like that visual nearly one-to-one -one ratio of blade to handle, right? Or people who just feel like maybe they were missing out on some meaningful cutting edge, I think it probably would have been better for, for most people. So not really that big of a deal. I do like the finish on this knife. I carried it a little bit and used it just a little bit. Uh, Kubi does a good job with their sort of light tumbled finish and high polish. It looks good. There's a little bit of a, uh, you know, some material left in here and it looks nice. It, it keeps it from looking, you know, completely and totally bland. Like a lot of knives just do like a big opening hole and there's nothing else in there. So there's a little bit of detail. As you can see there, it's going to be a little bit of a gunk trap, which really isn't that big of a deal. You just need to wipe it out with a paper towel or something. Um, this is pretty much, you know, right in that area of my favorite types of blades for EDC. I like blades where the tip points down, right? I like my reverse tantos. I like my sheep's foot blades and I like my Warncliffe blades usually for day to day. This has a little bit of belly, a little bit of curvature and it comes down to a reasonably thin cutting edge. In fact, I'll give you an example and just slice a piece of paper real quick. This doesn't prove a whole lot because if you have a pocket knife and use it day to day, you probably cut a lot of different stuff. But as you can see here, it's pretty readily slicing paper with minimal roll on the paper so it's doing more slicing than tearing do with that information what you will your mileage may vary but yeah it definitely does slice i like that i can get my finger up here and do draw cuts and i like how comfortable it is considering where all the lines go there's nice chamfering all the way around here and there's a little bit of contouring so honestly like the overall ergonomic comfort on this guy i keep missing that sorry it's more effective my my finger wants to come down here it's more effective to get your finger higher up in that slot. <laughs> oh, my wording there. Uh, ergonomic comfort is good. The wire clip is okay. It doesn't really create for a hot spot. I mean, it's like I can feel it, but there's nothing really there that's making me go, oh, I don't like it. So truthfully, overall, it's a really comfortable knife. Um, like I said, final cutting edge, nice and sharp. This is a this is a review sample, so I don't know if there will be any major changes aesthetically to the ones that are being released. Uh, this looks like a finished product to me, right? We have the little Tempest Knives logo right there. And then I would imagine, you know, it'll just say on yours, it'll say, uh, or the people who pre-order this, it'll say 14C28N instead of OS 10. Uh, also, the inside of this opening hole right here has been nicely knocked down. So you're not gonna be shaving your fingernails every single time you deploy it. You have an option between Black Micarta, Black G10 or Blue G10. 
The blue G10 uh, and the black G10 are a little less expensive. They're about 10 bucks less. If you just really, really like micarta, you can go with the black micarta. Truthfully, the black G10 and the black micarta look almost exactly the same, so you have to really want micarta. In any case, I think both price points are fair. Just want to point that out before I get too far. Moving on here, I don't think there's really anything else I want to say about the blade. I mean, it's a good, it's a good uh, uh, utilitarian blade shape and it sinks nicely into the handle. So the overall profile of the knife is pretty compact for the amount of knife and knife blade that you get. So that's good. Oh no, where's the lanyard hole? Who cares? Uh, the pocket clip is mounted in a great position. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of, a, of wire clips, especially as knives get more expensive. But considering the price point that this knife is in, I can't really complain too much. Wire clips are good functionally. They don't really lend anything amazing to the aesthetics of the knife. I mean, it just looks like a paper clip hanging out of your pocket, but functionally they do a pretty good job. The only issue I have with this one, it's the same with a lot of wire clips, is that the bill angles down, which has always confused me. They really should just end right here. The, this clip would be perfect if the, this rounded end right here just ended right here on like an upward swoop and did not come back down. Still though, in and out of the pocket, I have to admit it's pretty easy and it's a pretty smooth surface between the pocket clip and the um, micarta here. So yeah, I, I can't really complain too much. The other nice thing is that you can flip the, the uh, pocket clip over and lefties can enjoy this. It really isn't that much harder to manipulate. There I go, trying to deploy it on the lower end again. Uh, it's pretty easy to manipulate left-handed as well. So as far as, you know, my opinion is that lefties, you should be able to enjoy this just as much as righties. This knife does, I don't know if we're actually gonna be able to see in there, but it does run on uh, bearings, which is nice. Um, I mean, if you, you know, <laughs> I say that like it's optimal. That definitely comes down to preference, right? I like bearings because I don't work in an environment that has a lot of sand or crud or grit or anything, right? It is smooth and you can definitely tell that it's running on bearings, absolutely. So the stop pin is located actually internally and it is a part of the blade. You can see it right there. It's actually riding on little channels on the inside of the liners there. And then it locks out here with a point of contact on either side of the blade, which is nice. That's one additional point of contact than the traditional you know, exterior stop pin where it just, the tang of the blade just rests on it. So. Does that add anything meaningful? I like to think that it does. It's one additional pressure point, which should technically mitigate some pressure away from the pivot when you're doing a cut where you're kind of twisting, trying to rock it back out or something like that. But I don't know, a lot of that might be in my head. I just prefer that. The, the thing that I have noticed that it is, that, that it, it actually benefits is when you're trying to center the blade, get the action good and have no blade play. When you have one additional point of contact with a stop pin like that, that their lugs attached to the blade, it's much easier to get that, that feeling of solidity and center it and have it be smooth at the exact same time. That way it, it just, that stability is there while it's still nice and smooth, right? Um, that's what I've noticed, so I kind of you know tend to like that. Um, like I said, I did manage to center that blade up. It looks like it's actually, try, now that I've been playing with it, it's actually trying to come back off a little bit, but that would be literally just just barely, barely tightening the pivot would just get it to go that little tiny bit to the left there. Um, but yeah, the blade was centered. So I would imagine that that would be the case with the full production variants. Kubi has never really had a problem with that. And whenever there is an issue with centering, I can usually just adjust the body screws and pivot and it'll come right back to center. So uh, lock up, completely and totally solid left and right, no blade play up and down. No uh, lock stick. It is for some reason a little bit tighter up here than it is down here, but not by much. My guess is there's just something on the surface of the blade. And again, this is just a review sample. There's something on the surface of the blade that the detent ball is trying to clear through when it gets to about right here, right? So a little bit of 10 weight nano oil should usually fix issues like that. In fact, I can probably do it right here on camera and have exactly that result. Should we go ahead and try? I think we will. Let's just add a little drop to the detent ball. Try not to get anything on the actual lock face, which can be a little bit tricky, but usually your 10 weight nano oil will clear up anything like that, or at least make it a little bit smoother. And are we actually at that point? Yes, we are. So that's generally gonna be, <laughs> it's, it's 10 weight nano oil is freaking awesome and it works almost immediately. That's literally exactly what it was. It was just something sitting on the, <laughs> the blade so that's gonna happen right whether you and that doesn't have that doesn't matter if you're working with phosphor bronze or 
uh, bearings because that's the issue was not with the internals uh, or like the what was re the washers, right? It was with the detent ball and the face of the blade. So that's fine. Uh, the actual detent down here, reasonable click, nice tap. Not a thud though, so that's good. And no detent lash. Yeah, this is a pretty good day-to-day -day blade. I mean, this isn't, he's not reinventing the wheel here or doing anything amazingly different, but we've got Kubi's manufacturing quality. We've got good materials. We've got a nested liner. Um, we've got a good looking and ergonomic handle profile. We have a pretty generic wire clip, but you know what, it works. We have a very low, you know, amount of hardware. There's not really a lot of, or we have minimal hardware, I guess. Uh, ease of manipulation is absolutely there. Ease of disengagement of the lock, definitely there, right? Nice blade profile. Just, there's a lot of good here. A lot of generic good, but a lot of good. What's this come in at? 75 bucks for your basic G10 and 14C28N. 85 bucks for your micarta. Uh, for me, it's, it would be a no-brainer. I would just go with the, um, I would just go with the G10. Uh, we see knives that are challenging this, uh, that are coming in at maybe 65, maybe 60. I think it's important to remember that those are companies that are able, able to, uh, manufacture much larger batches. So they don't need to profit nearly as much to be successful. Um, so considering Casey probably didn't make 10,000 of these, I think the price is pretty there, right? Um, I'd like to see him do more, so I think it's important that we support him and other people like him when they're making designs like this and choosing OEMs like Kubi, right? There's a bunch of them out there that are really good, but this is good. Yeah, if you pre-order this, I think you're going to be really happy with it, and if you're considering pre-ordering it, mm, yeah, I like this. Uh, this is a knife that I'm going to recommend. Considering it is right at 75 bucks, maybe it's $75.99, whatever. I'm going to put it in my uh, Cheap Knives I Like playlist because... It's a budget knife by my standard. Even if it's like a buck over the line, I'm going to call it a budget knife. And it's also a knife that I would recommend. So I'm going to put it in my most recommended knives playlist. Very cool. I like this. This is a cool knife. Nice design. Um, that's going to be pretty much it today, guys. Thanks, thanks so much to KC for uh, sending this in for review. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.